Long jump is an athletics field event that consists of an intricate speedy run that has an explosive takeoff from a 20 cm wide wooden board. From biomechanics and Newton's laws, the forces from the run-up and the ground send the athlete flying into the air, landing in a pit of sand. The long jump consists of four phases. The approach, the takeoff, the flight and the landing. In the long jump event, the athlete's objective is to obtain maximum displacement of the centre of gravity in the horizontal direction. In a horizontal jump, the athlete endeavours to get their feet as far forward as possible without falling backwards when landing. All four of these phases contribute to the accuracy and success of a long jump. A key element in any sport is that every individual has their own technique. Demonstrating a technique is a good tool used for beginners. The approach is the most important phase for setting up the success of the overall jump. The purpose of the approach phase is to develop an optimal horizontal velocity and adjust the body into a position that will be beneficial in the takeoff phase and allow the takeoff foot to be accurately placed on the ball without fouling. During the approach phase, Newton's first and third laws of inertia and action reaction are represented as the athlete approaches the wooden board. The athlete starts to sprint towards the board to take the jump. As the athlete's feet meet the ground, it produces a downward and backward motion, therefore exerting a force in that direction. The reaction that the force produces is reflective of the athlete moving in a forward and upward motion towards the direction of travel. In simple terms, the athlete starts to exert a force against the ground, which leads to the momentum of running. The athlete also exhibits Newton's first law of reaction. Here, the athlete's forward and upward motion will continue its acceleration as long as there is a force exerted upon it. The forward and upward motion produced when the athlete continues in a linear motion towards the sandpit creates speed. During the approach phase, it is important to have the maximal speed to achieve optimal distance. As the run-up involves quick and powerful muscle actions at a maximal speed, it requires the fast twitch muscle fibres and simultaneous forces to effectively carry out the task. To produce a maximal reaction, the simultaneous forces of the muscles generate a great force against the ground to effectively carry out the takeoff phase. These simultaneous forces involve large muscle groups. In the case of the approach phase, this predominantly involves the quadriceps, hamstrings, calves, the core and the arm motor movements. According to Hay, if the athlete is travelling at 100% maximal control speed, it will take the athlete approximately 45 to 55 metres or the equivalent distance achieved in 6 seconds for the run-up. However, the larger the run-up, the more the chance there is for error to occur. The centre of mass is an important component in the success of the long jump as it determines the horizontal and vertical velocity that is used for the accuracy of the distance. The horizontal and vertical velocity works as a relationship throughout the long jump because if one of these elements is not correct, the entire jump is compromised. In the last few strides of the run-up, the centre of gravity significantly changes to a lowered state to improve the success of the takeoff phase. The athlete must ensure that the vertical and horizontal velocities are at their optimal standard, which relates to the centre of gravity because if the centre of gravity is not balanced before the jump, then the horizontal and vertical velocities will be severely affected and an unsuccessful jump is produced. The takeoff phase. The purpose of the takeoff is to obtain vertical velocity while retaining as much horizontal velocity as possible. The takeoff distance is a function of the accuracy with which the athlete places the foot on the takeoff board and the body position at the instant of takeoff. Although performance in the long jump event is largely determined by the athlete's ability to achieve a fast horizontal velocity at the end of the run up, the athlete must also use an appropriate takeoff technique to make best use of this run up velocity. At the start of the takeoff, long jumpers place their takeoff foot ahead of their centre of mass at touchdown to achieve the necessary and desired low position. Their body then pivots up and over the takeoff foot. During this time, the athlete's takeoff leg rapidly flexes and extends. In long jump, the athlete wishes to achieve maximal flight distance of the human projectile by launching it at the optimum takeoff velocity and takeoff angle. A large horizontal velocity at takeoff to travel forward and a great vertical velocity are desired by the athlete when launching the body into the air. Just before touchdown, the athlete pre-tenses the muscles of the takeoff leg. 
The athlete's takeoff foot strikes the takeoff board, exerting large amounts of force upon it. The flexions of the hip, knee, and ankle joints during takeoff are a result of the large loads imposed on them at this time. Fast eccentric actions occur early in the takeoff phase, enabling the muscles to exert large forces and therefore produce large gains in vertical velocity. Maximally activating the muscles of the takeoff leg keeps the leg as straight as possible during the takeoff. This enables the athlete's centre of mass to pivot up over the foot and again generate vertical velocity. The instant of maximum knee flexion is a poor indicator of when the extensor muscles of the takeoff leg change from eccentric activity to concentric activity. Over 60% of the athlete's final vertical velocity is achieved by the instant of maximum knee flexion, indicating that the pivot mechanism is the single most important mechanism acting to create vertical velocity during the takeoff. During the last half of the takeoff, explosive extension of the hip, knee and ankle joints is accompanied by a forceful swinging of the free leg and arms, placing the centre of mass higher and ahead of the takeoff line at the instant of takeoff. This is believed to increase the athlete's velocity at takeoff. A low position into the takeoff is necessary to give a large vertical range of motion in order to produce upwards velocity. The takeoff velocity that a long jumper is able to generate is substantially greater at lower takeoff angles than at high takeoff angles. Therefore, the optimum takeoff angle is shifted to below 45 degrees. Newton's third law action reaction notes that objects exert equal but opposite forces on each other. When a long jumper pushes down on the ground during their takeoff, the earth pushes back on them in the opposite direction, with the same size force at exactly the same time, and as a result the athlete moves in the opposite direction. This force is called the ground reaction force. The ground reaction force tends to change the speed and direction of the athlete's centre of mass. An athlete's vertical takeoff velocity is produced by the vertical ground reaction force exerted on the athlete and initially acts to reverse the athlete's downward velocity at takeoff, therefore accelerating them upwards. A slight reduction in the upwards velocity is always experienced in the last phase of the run-up before takeoff. This is because the vertical force must drop down to zero at the instant of takeoff. The ground reaction force also has the tendency to produce angular acceleration of the athlete's body about its somersaulting axis. In long jump, the ground reaction force generates a forward torque about the athlete's centre of mass. During the early phases of the takeoff, the torque produces a backwards acceleration, but quickly alters to produce forwards acceleration. Therefore, the athlete experiences a great forwards rotational impulse, leaving the takeoff board with an immense amount of forward somersaulting angular momentum. Flight phase. The flight phase is an important area of long jump as it is designed to control the body's forward rotation at takeoff to allow for an effective landing. There are three different techniques used in long jump the sail technique hang position and the hitch kick movement but for the purposes of this video we will be focusing on the sail technique as it is the natural technique our athlete possesses for our individual's abilities. The sail technique utilizes the forward rotation of the body during flight to bring the knees up into a high held tuck position before an extension of the body to allow for landing. Whilst in flight the trunk needs to remain in an upright position whilst one leg is horizontal and the other, takeoff leg, is bent to create the forward trunk rotation and allow the back leg to be brought into the tuck without too much backward rotation restricting the landing. Another alteration can be made to the velocity at which an athlete performs a takeoff. This can alter the momentum going into the flight phase and according to Newton's second law of motion, these external forces will impact on the flight phase of the jump. A change in momentum during the run-up affects the takeoff that in turn affects the jump and the momentum involved in the flight resulting in a shorter jump. 
The momentum change can also occur during flight alone. If the athlete's position is slightly altered, the jumper will lose momentum and velocity, causing flight disadvantages. The rate of change in momentum will all depend on the force causing the change and the way in which the direction of force acts. The units of linear kinetics also apply to long jumpers, as mass and force directly affect the flight phase coming out of the takeoff. The force distributed at takeoff produces acceleration to continue forward angular rotation in the flight phase, which helps achieve distance. During the flight phase, an athlete wants to orient the body segments to properly produce an acceptable landing. The objective with center of gravity with an athlete is to obtain maximum displacement to remain in as much of a horizontal position as possible. The center of gravity whilst in the flight phase remains high. However, when preparing for the landing phase, the center of gravity needs to change from a high state to a low state. The feet positioning also changes, like the center of gravity, from a tuck position to a linear extension without disturbing or causing undesirable effects to the fo The landing phase. The landing stems directly from the flight phase, so any changes in positioning close to the landing could alter the entire performance of an athlete. If an athlete leans forward during the final stages, it delays their touchdown and they are carried further along the parabolic flight path. This moves the centre of gravity closer to the feet, which reduces landing distance. However, if an athlete keeps an upright trunk, they decrease the reverse flight time, but increase distance jumped. The changes in an athlete's magnitude and the direction of their reaction forces altering the incline of the legs to a horizontal position means they will generally land in the sitting position, which means they lose distance. The aim of a long jumper is to strike a compromise between distances and takeoff to preserve ability to rotate forward over the feet. The aim to landing is to cushion the knees by con contracting hamstrings upon impact to rotate forward, thrusting head and shoulders over the knees to facilitate forward rotation. In doing this, the ground reaction forces pass behind the centre of gravity, yet again increasing forward angular rotation, causing athletes to spring forward in an effort to regain control. Newton's third law of motion stated that to every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. This is especially evident in a long jump landing. Athletes' action is to move legs forward. To land, the reaction to the rest of the body is equal and opposite, meaning if arms move forward and upward, legs will move forward and downward, which is necessary when landing. The thrust of arms upward and forward evokes a contrary angular reaction, assisting in the upward-forward rotation over athletes' feet, allowing heel imprint as the point of measurement.